Hi, I'm Seth Rankins, and today I would like to take some time to share with you some of the research me and my colleagues have been working on. Previous research has shown that regional size differences in body mass and antler size of white-tailed deer is nutritionally rather than genetically mediated. However, there are currently three non-exclusive hypotheses that can explain this relationship. The first and maybe simplest of these is that forage quantity is driving these regional size differences we see in white-tailed deer. Or simply put, the more food there is on the landscape, the bigger the deer will grow. The second hypothesis that could explain these regional size differences we see is that the forage quality or nutritive value of the forage differs between regions. So for example, say that we have a partridge pea plant in areas where the deer grow larger and it might have 15% crude protein content, while in areas where the deer are smaller, that same partridge pea plant might only have 10% crude protein. The third hypothesis is that as forage diversity increases, deer size also increases. This is due to as certain plants on the landscape senesce and then disappear at certain times during the year, such as during droughts, the animal on the right hand side, the smaller deer, will be left without anything to eat. In reality now, he would probably still be able to find enough to survive on some browse or some subsistence food. However, in the regions that we have larger deer in, there's a diversity of forage plants and they can just switch from feeding on their one plant at a certain time of the year to a different plant. So the objectives of our research was first off to describe the magnitude of deer size differences across the coastal sand plain ecoregion of South Texas. And then from there, we want to see does the quantity of high quality forage explain these size differences? Does the nutrient value of forage follow the same gradient as deer antler size and body mass? Or does diversity of forage plants explain some of these localized differences in deer size that we see? And from our three mutually non-exclusive hypotheses, we developed some predictions of what we would expect to see if they were supported. So in areas where the deer are smaller, the negative sign in my table here, we would expect there to be less forage quantity on the landscape than in areas where the deer sizes are larger, the plus sign in my table. Now, nutrients for simplicity can be broken into good and bad. They're not all the time good and not all the time bad. But for those nutrients that I have termed good, say crude protein and digestible energy, we're usually interested in maximizing the intake for these animals. So we would expect in, for these nutrients that in areas where it's higher in the forage, we would see larger deer sizes. Conversely, there are some nutrients, say sulfur, that ruminants try to avoid and they want to minimize their intake up. And for these nutrients, we would expect to see the inverse relationship. So as that nutrient increases in the forage plant, we would expect to see smaller deer sizes. And then lastly, we would expect to see smaller deer sizes in areas with less forage diversity and larger deer sizes in areas with greater forage diversity. Moving into where this study took place, we conducted the study on four different sites in South Texas across the coastal San Chiica region. The first two of these sites were on the San Antonio Viejo or SAV ranch, and I simply termed these the north and south site. And at this point, I would like to point out that all my charts and graphs throughout the entire talk will be color coded. So the SAV North site will always be yellow, the SAV South site will always be black, and so forth. The third site was at the Buena Vista Ranch located in Jim Hogg County, getting more onto the coastal San Chiica region. And then the last of these four sites was the El Sal's Ranch located on the eastern edge of the coastal San Chiica region along the Gulf of Mexico. 
At this point, I would like to take a minute to point out that all four of these properties are owned by the East Foundation, which is a private agricultural research organization established from the estate of Robert C. East to promote wildlife conservation on working cattle ranches through an integrated program of ranching, science, and education. More importantly for this research, the East Foundation does not actively manage or hunt any of the native ungulate species on the properties. So any size differences we see are due to the nutrition in the naturally occurring vegetation and not due to supplemental feed or different hunting regimes. Moving into the methods now. To get at some of these deer size differences, we captured deer annually during October and November from 2011 through 2019, and we recorded an age-specific body mass and gross Boone and Crockett score for each animal. To get at the quantity of forage, we measured autumn above-ground biomass of preferred forbs using quarter meter square quadrats annually from 2012 through 2019. And we collected this data at 50 random points at each of our four sites. For the forage quality, we collected 18 different species of commonly found deer forage plants in the coastal, eco, coastal Samplain eco region of South Texas during three two week time periods in both 2019 and 2020. And we collected these samples at 30 random locations at each of our four sites. Once we had dried and processed these samples using a Wiley mill to pass through a one millimeter screen, we measured digestible energy, crude protein, and 11 different minerals that are important for ruminant nutrition. We measured crude protein using the Keldahl method. We measured the minerals using inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry. And then we estimated digestible energy using sequential fiber an analysis and bomb calorimetry, and then plugged those values into the equations you see at the bottom of this slide developed by Robbins and Hangley. Lastly, to get at some of the forage plant diversity, we used presence absence data. For Forbes, we collected it biannually from fall 2012 through spring 2019, once again using quarter meter square quadrats. And then for the woody species and cacti, we used a line intercept method to collect our presence absence data. And this was collected again, once again at 50 random points at each of our four locations. Once we had collected all this data, we needed to analyze it. So to do that, to get at the deer size differences, we fit a von Bertelnoffy growth curve to each body mass and antler size for males and females, both for all four different sites. And then we compared asymptotic size differences to compare site differences in forage quantity and forage quality. We used Friedman rank sum tests and then did pairwise comparisons using a Wilcoxian rank sum test. Lastly, for forage plant diversity, we simply calculated a Shannon Wiener diversity index. Moving into the results now, the next three charts are going to be very similar and that will have age on the X axis. And then we'll have the morphology measurement, this case, body mass and pounds for female deer on the Y axis. And here you'll, we'll see that we have four different lines, two of those, the red and blue El Sal's and Buena Vista sites respectively are much smaller than the other two sites, the two SAV sites respectively. And we see that we're looking at a 10 pound difference or that equates to about a 9% change in body mass between these sites for an animal this size. Looking at male body mass now, we see that same trend going on. The blue and red lines, the El Sal's and Buena Vista sites are lower than the two SAV sites. However, you'll notice that the magnitude of these differences is a little bit bigger now. Now we're looking at a 40 pound difference, which is about a 20% change in body mass for animals this size. And lastly, we see that exact same trend with antler size. Again, now we're looking at about an 11 inch difference, gross Boone and Crockett score, or about an 8% change between 
the El Salas and Buena Vista sites and the SAV sites with the larger deer. So let's now take a look at the quantity of forage on the landscape. Here we're looking at year on the x-axis and annual above ground biomass of forbs and pounds per acre on the y-axis. And we see that there is lots of yearly variation and that's mainly driven by the stochastic nature of rainfall in South Texas. However, when we look a little closer, you'll see that that black site, the SAV South site, one of the sites with the larger deer, had significantly less amount of forage on the landscape than the other three sites. Moving more into the forage quality now, we measured all these different nutrients and we found that two of them, digestible energy and sodium, there were some site differences for. However, there were no site differences for any of the other nutrients we measured. So let's take a look at the digestible energy now. On this graph, you'll notice that the red and blue bars, the Buena Vista and El Sal sites respectively, had on average about 60 kilocalories per kilogram less digestible energy in the browse and mast than the two SAV sites. Moving on to the sodium here, we see that those two blue bars, the browse and forbs for the El Sal site respectively, had a way higher sodium content in this forage than any of the other three sites. Moving into the diversity of forage, in this graph, we are looking at the diversity of forbs specifically, and you'll notice nothing jumps out as eye-opening on this graph, but as you look a little closer, you'll notice that red bar, the Buena Vista site, one of the sites with the smaller deer is a little bit lower in forb diversity than the other three sites. Similarly, when we move into the browse and mast species, we see that the other site with smaller deer, the El Sal site, that blue bar is now appreciably lower than the other three sites in diversity. So let's plug these results back into our predictions and see if they agree with what we think we should see if, it, if any of our hypotheses are support. So we saw that we had two sites, the El Sal's and Buena Vista sites with smaller deer sizes and two sites, the two SAV sites with larger deer sizes. Likewise, we saw that there were some differences between sites in the forage quantity. However, the site with the least amount of forage was the SAV South site, one of those sites with the larger deer. And this is in opposition to what we would expect. So we see that our hypothesis for forage quantity driving deer sizes is not supported. Moving into the sodium, once again, we see that there were some site differences. The El Sal site had higher sodium content than any of the other sites. However, sodium is usually considered a limiting nutrient for ruminants and that they try to max, well, not necessarily maximize, but that more is usually better. Hence why we put salt licks out on the landscape for deer sometimes. So we would expect it to be in the opposite direction of what we do see here, because we El Sal site had some of the smallest deer and sodium was highest there. However, I would like to point out that the El Sal site, if you recall, was right next to the Gulf of Mexico, which just happens to be this large body of salt water. So it makes sense that the sodium content in forage there would be higher, but once again, not explaining the size differences we see. So really not the forage quantity or sodium driving the deer size differences. However, the energy and diversity of forage plants on the landscape potentially could be driving some of these size differences. We saw that the amount of digestible energy in the browse mass species was lowest at the two sites with the smallest deer and highest at the two sites with the largest deer, which is in agreement with our prediction. Likewise, we saw that diversity in either forbs or browse and mass species, one of those forage plant guilds was lower at the El Sal site and Buena Vista sites, which were the two sites with smaller deer. However, the two SAV sites with the larger deer were consistently higher on diversity indices across all forage guilds. So how does this fit into the bigger scheme of things? 
as I alluded to at the start of this talk, there have been a couple common garden experiments that have shown unquestionably that these regional size differences in deer we see are due to nutrition, not genetics. However, when you dig a little deeper into the primary literature, you see that there's some discrepancies in what's causing these size differences. Is it forage quantity or is it more the forage quality and diversity? For example, Lash Lashley et al. 2015, doing some work in the coastal regions of North Carolina, found that forage quantity seemed to be limiting deer size. However, Jones et al. 2008, Horrell et al. 2015, working in Mississippi and Louisiana respectively, found that forage quality, so the nutritive value of the forage, really was driving some of these size differences, it seemed like. Our research sort of supports this hypothesis that forage quality and diversity is driving regional size differences in antler size and body mass. And then lastly, for what does this mean for management? I would encourage managers in the coastal region of South, coastal Sandsheet ecoregion of South Texas to focus their efforts on increasing the quality of nutrition by increasing plant diversity, maintaining those native rangelands, rather than focusing strictly on the quantity of forage or nutrition that they're providing deer. And this is especially important during some of the nutritionally stressful time periods, such as late summer when does are trying to raise fawns. With that, I need to thank our funding sources and the many, many people who helped collect the data and make this project a success. If you have questions, there should be someone able to take them. Unfortunately, I am in the field today and will not be here to answer questions, but like I say, someone should be and they will be very knowledgeable. Thank you for taking the time to listen today.